Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We have some more Dutch racing for you. Welcome back, Glenn. Thanks, Jeff. Who's, whose footage is this, Glenn? This is a footage of a former teammate of me, uh, Bauke Gerritsma. He joined another club, uh, Dutch Food Valley Cycling. And uh, this is his race on the, the Papendal uh, Top Sport Facility uh, in, uh, in Arnhem, Holland. So this is another one of these practice crits. It's a lot like Alviso, um, but it's a little bit more organized. I, I really like one thing that you guys did. You can see the numbers in the screen here. There's colored numbers for different groups. So like the, the P12 equivalent have green numbers. The Cat 3, 4 field would be uh, blue numbers. And then the U17 ladies have red numbers. So you kind of get an idea. I kind of like that. I want to implement that at Alviso. Um, there's a lot of good ideas we can carry over from the Netherlands that we can implement here at Alviso. But um, I'm really excited to get into this because for once I can talk about Dutch racing and actually poke some holes in the strategy. I was pretty surprised <laughs> at how this race went. So um, with that said, should we get into it, Glenn? Yeah, let's go, Jeff. But first, quick message from the sponsor of this video, and that is Native. Native sells deodorants. And um, look, are, are you tired of being sweaty and disgusting at the end of your training rides? I didn't want to say anything, but we're tired of you being disgusting at the end of your training ride. So, so Native's here to save the day. Uh, simple, effective ingredients. All of their deodorants are paraben-free, aluminum-free. And, um, and here's the thing about, about how you should smell. Look, I didn't want to get into this, okay? Native's forcing my hand here, you guys. Here's the thing about how you should smell. I think no smell is the best smell. On one hand, you don't want to knock people over with your BO, obviously. But equally as bad is you don't want to drive people out of the room with your crazy cologne musk all the time, right? That's why Native is great. I went with these two scents right here. Unscented, for obvious reasons. But then, this other one here. This is uh, Eucalyptus and Mint. It's, it's very mild. It's very subdued. And I dig it. So um, if you guys want to check out my link and code, which I will put magically on the screen somewhere right here, you're going to get an additional 30% off. So um, help me out. Click the link. They have good prices, simple ingredients. And with that said, let's talk about some bike racing. Okay, so this first thing I wanted to talk about real fast is this thing I hear all the time. And we got it a little bit from Boca who submitted this footage. And that is, hey, it's just a training race. I'm not here to win. I'm here for a workout. I'm so tired of that. Glenn, Glenn what do you think? Yeah, if you attend the race then uh, be prepared to win and don't uh, treat it as a workout you can work out on a, on your trainer on a, or on a road on your own but if you're going to a race train your strategy train to win exactly exactly fitness is one aspect of this sport but you got as you guys well know if you're watching nor norcal cycling videos i put this focus on strategy tactics that's a big part of this sport Argu arguably it's bigger than fitness and if you're practicing bad strategy and bad tactics in, in a practice race, then you're just gonna develop those bad habits. So I'm tired of that. If you guys are going to a race and pinning up a number, try to win, and you will realize that if you're winning practice crits, you're also winning real crits. So anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about this race. Okay, so we're still 54 kilometers to go in this race. There's a break of three with a handful of seconds. Boca finds himself in this perfect position to follow this rider, and then he doesn't. <laughs> he's kind of like in between and this is his teammate in front of him by the way you guys remember the the um food what is it called again glenn a yeah, dutch food valley cycling team yeah so then his teammate <laughs> takes over but then he saw he just did like 1200 watts so it's like okay are you chasing a teammate are you following this attack he's kind of in no man's land here he's not in the draft he's also not letting his teammate get a gap and this is going to be a theme for boca um which is like dude make a decision like either commit to it or don't it's really weird yeah, and it's like they don't communicate with each other, like what uh, what's happening, who is who is gonna chase and who is gonna follow who. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's a bit a weird, uh, weird of a situ situation over here. And here's another teammate. It looks like chasing his teammate back. Like I, this doesn't make any sense to me. At first, I thought it was the situation that you guys have, Glenn, at your practice race, where you don't treat each other as teammates, but. Boca was pretty clear in his notes that he sent me that they were doing team tactics. It was them. There's one pro in this field. We'll talk more about him later. And then a couple of other teams. So it was very much a race uh, um, amongst these teams. So so the, all of this is super bizarre to me. Like, why chase teammates constantly? It's the weirdest thing. All right, so that little move is brought back just a few hundred meters later. And this is, this is great. This is what I like to see. Boca is like, what, 10th wheel. Gets it up to seven, 800 watts. 
And look at the speed he carries past the front riders. This is the way you're supposed to do a counterattack. And you get a free gap. I mean, it's like six, six or 700 watts for a handful of seconds. And then you settle into threshold. And that is the right way to establish a gap. And why is he doing 1,000 watts out of this corner, out of the saddle? You can tell he's out of the saddle because his handlebars are bouncing back and forth like that. It's super weird to me. I mean, the whole idea of a successful breakaway attempt is you keep it consistent and smooth. Those spikes in power really take the, the snap out of your legs. Yeah, they are hurting you. And just ride at your threshold and maybe you get some free seconds from the peloton and just diesel, diesel on and see what happens then. Okay, been a crazy first five kilometers, and there goes the pro. He's been biding his time. You saw him just go light speed on the left, made that attack from like 10th or 15th wheel, immediately got out of sight like I was talking about before. <laughs> so powerful, and you can see the al the alarms are going off. You can hear Boca. What did Boca just tell his teammate, Glenn? Yeah, he told his teammate to get to the front or to get on the wheel of the pro. He Something's gotta gotta happen over here. Otherwise, uh, he's gaining too much time on the peloton, and it's only getting harder to chase him. Yeah, best case, you're gonna have to chase really hard for the next 10, 15, 20 kilometers. Worst case, the race is just over because you don't let a pro just ride solo off the front. And really, with like, Boca had what six, seven teammates in this race. Somebody should have been marking the pro rider and not allowing that to happen in the first place. So now it's like, like Boca said. Um, which was, by the way, the correct move. It's what I would be telling my teammates, too. Hey, you missed it. Now you got to pay your dues. Get to the front and chase. And as you can see, just a couple hundred meters later, it looks like Boca wasn't happy with the, do the work that Jasper was doing. So he kind of takes it on himself, gets to the front, ends up doing a pretty hard pull on the front. I like this, Jeff. Uh, leading by example. Just uh, take initiative and uh, bring the guy back. Okay. Pro is brought back. Counterattack goes. And Boca decides he's going to chase the teammate back. <laughs> 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 All right, Pro is brought back. Boca and his teammates have done a lot of work, and now they're deciding. Now we're gonna be on the offensive, and we're gonna we're gonna chase each other back. What? <laughs> this is his teammate. <laughs> What's going on, Glenn? It's like cat. Yeah. It's like a cat five race over here, man. I don't know what Boca is thinking. Maybe it's Jasper. Uh, maybe it's Jasper off the front, and he don't want them to let him ride. But. Yeah, you see what happens over here. I don't. I just don't really get what hap what's happening over here. Do you, Jeff? No. And then he's done doing this thing, like I mentioned earlier, which is going to be again a theme in this race. Which is, dude, you're so out of position. You started to chase your teammate, and now you've missed the last four or five attempts of these riders to bridge across. He, Boca needs to be in their wheel, getting that free draft across. That's teamwork. The teammate attacks. You are behind your competition. Your competition is forced to chase. You sit in the draft. Right? It's like. It doesn't. It's hard to execute, easy to describe, but that's that's the long and the short of it. I, again, he's, he's sitting here three, four hundred watts to chase back his teammate. Five, six hundred watts, chasing back his teammate. Like, what on earth is going on? Yeah, this costs just a lot of energy, and um, just make a decision: get on the wheel or uh, go back to the peloton. But this is taking way too much energy, man. Okay, teammate is brought back, and again, I'm, I'm having deja vu, Glenn. <laughs> again. Here we go. On the left side, a good slingshot counterattack. You can see he didn't spike it up to 1,000 this time. And he's ripping fast now, 31 miles an hour. You want to lock it in for five, 600 watts for a good 10, 15 seconds, establish that gap, and then um, and then chill. Five or 600 watts for 10 or 15. <laughs> and then chill, Boca. I don't know if this is sustainable. 700 watts? I mean, this isn't well, the last lap, is it? Am I? <laughs> no. No, he's a big guy, but 600 watts is totally unsustainable. Just ride it maybe slightly above your threshold, but yeah, try to establish a gap and, and see what happens from there. But this is totally unsustainable. Maybe it's a, it's a, it's an anger move or something. I don't know, but this is not going to work. It shows a lack of experience to me because you should kind of know your limits. And 182 beats per minute, it's pretty high. And five, 600 watts is really high. So by the time... His teammate and one other, who we'll see in just a moment, bridge across. Um, you still have to have energy. You have to continue rotating turns. The whole idea about a successful breakaway is consistency. You can't just nuke it for one lap and then say, okay, job done. This is what I see a lot in amateur races, in, in lower category races, in uh, you know pink and blue number races, not green number races. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So you know he gets the elbow flick right here. And I think right here, Boca is just like, 
yeah, dude, I'm going to try 700 watts for another second and back down to two, 200 to 150. Like, he just seems cooked to me. And we don't have a rear camera, so we don't know what's going on behind. But I'm fairly certain they have a gap, and I think he just cooked himself. He did one lap and just nuked it full throttle, and now he's got nothing left. And he takes this funky line through this corner. Like, this is not... Guys, this is not how you race a breakaway. So he forces his teammate to counter, and then Boca's like, not on my watch, and he starts chasing his teammate again. Like, none of this makes sense to me. I hate to say it. I hate to, to, to bash poor Boca here, but I just don't like the way that they're that they're racing this race as a team. No, I, I don't get anything of the strategy either, but yeah, maybe uh, I ask I have to ask the, the guy again after we uh, we posted the movie. So Boca still has a teammate up the road in this breakaway group, and then you can see this rider in front of him frantically trying to chase it back because this is the other major team in the race, and they've missed it. So they're chasing this back. This is a great position for Boca because he's got a teammate up the road. He doesn't have to do any chasing. He can just sit in the wheel, save energy. And then all of a sudden, what is going on? He is chasing his teammate. Now, you never want to attack from the front. I mean, you don't want to attack in this situation in the first place because you don't chase teammates, you guys. But you also don't want to attack from the front because it just doesn't have the same amount of impact. No, and even if you're doing it, then good are the rest of the people. Yeah, exactly. You should be on the far left-hand side of the road. Again, don't attack and chase teammates, but if you're going to, at least gutter them. So you saw he just punched his own ticket here for, like, no reason, because he didn't get a gap. He helped these people chase his teammate back, and now he's at 178 beats per minute at the back of this chase group, kind of struggling to hold the wheel. Again, he's like a bike length off the back, not getting a good draft. So this was... This is rough. Um, if I was his teammate up in the break, I'd be pretty upset if I saw... <laughs> A teammate trying to chase me back. It's, it's no good. Yeah, Jeff, I think uh, I think you're right on this one. Are we being too rough on Boca? <laughs> is this, is well, this I, d I don't think so. It's a stupid move. If there is a chase on the front and you do that kind of thing, because he's not just accelerating out of the corner. He's doing like f five, six hundred watts for a good five seconds, and then he's he's pulling off. Yeah, and this is the moment. See, now you can see the group up front. You can see them. They're about to get caught. This is the moment when you want to be fresh. The breakaway group is right up there, and this is when it's 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 of critical importance. The pro rider now just pulled off. That was the pro rider. This is the moment right here, Glenn. For you folks who yeah. don't like sprinting or who just like good, proper teamwork, that was the moment. You nuke it. You go, you go 1,000 watts. Because think about it. Pro rider pulls off. He's out of position. The front riders who have been chasing are tired, and then the leaders who just got caught, they're obviously tired. So Balco eventually gets to the front and attacks, but again, it's an attack from the front of the field. It's like too little, too late, so it just doesn't have that impact because he attacked from the front, and then also because he spent all of this energy helping chase his teammate back in the first place. So this is why it's important to get those strategies dialed, especially in practice crits like this, because we know that Boca is really strong. He's proven that in this race. His power numbers are off the charts, but because of some strategic and timing mistakes, he just wasn't ready for it and wasn't prepared in that critical moment of the race when it mattered most, when I think he could have made a pretty serious bid for solo victory with about 11 kilometers to go. Yeah, Jeff, I think you're right. And I think if Bauk can uh, save save his energy more and uh, use it at the right time, we're gonna, we're gonna have a hard time with him because he's a strong rider. Glenn, we've arrived at the last lap. Well, almost the last lap. We're about a lap, a little over a lap to go. And you can see um, Glenn and his team. I did it again. Boca and his teammate yeah. <laughs> have made it to the front. And uh, there is a group of two that is still riding off the front. You can see them up there. No rush, right? There's, there's, there's no rush just to, like, hammer it and bring them back because you want to slowly ramp up the speed. If you guys watched Glenn's last video, Glenn did did a master class and how to do this correctly you basically want to catch those two riders in the last possible moment is that right glenn yeah uh, you have to spend as 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 less energy as you want at at this stage so just reel them in really slow keep them at the three or four seconds and ride as hard as the pack al allows you to ride so uh, take it easy and um, see see what happens just don't get catch them too early yeah he, i 
that whole start finish straight, he's been doing five, six hundred watts. It's a lot of power. He's a big dude, but look, now he's kind of dug himself a hole. He's 182 beats per minute, and he's got 1,300 meters to go. If he's leading this out for his teammates, you don't want to catch them this soon, and this is exactly why, right here. The counterattacks go. If they were a little carrot on a stick, still three seconds up the road, and Boko was doing, you know, three or 400 watts instead, he wouldn't have to deal with this. Now this is a big threat. Now he really has to step on it to try to catch this last rider. Otherwise, it's a threat for the race win. But he, like, how many how many bullets does he have left? You want to be increasing your speed in the lead out, not surging and then decreasing and then getting counterattacked. Like, this is not the right way to do it. He shouldn't be down at 200 watts right now, right? He should be, he should be very slowly building his speed, just like Glenn did in the last video. I'll link that if you guys missed it. But, um, at least now he just gets a moment of reprieve from number seven here in front of him, who's going to uh, to continue on. But we're just not going fast enough. And with 650 meters to go, you want to be basically all-out sprint at this point. And you want to have more than just one rider. It looks like Boca's kind of shouldering the entire burden of the lead out. And also, let's we didn't even talk about the wind. There's really been no consideration for the wind. This is a left-to-right wind. Boca should be pinned on the right-hand side of the road and only giving shelter to his teammates, in particular his sprinter. It looks like right here he is just giving shelter from the wind to the entire peloton, and that's going to that's gonna bite them here in just a moment. So we're up at 184 beats per minute now. This is the final Hail Mary lead out. We got up to about 1,200 watts, but it's just 150 meters to go. It's too little too late. And first person out of his draft isn't even his teammate. It's that pro who sniped him who took the win. Let's go back and look. Okay, so Sprinter comes out and and just demolishes <laughs> the field sprint yeah. and wins. And the embarrassing part about this, I feel bad. I, I feel bad bashing Boca some more here, but one, two, three, four. Is that four teammates he has in the top six riders with 100 meters to go, and they couldn't, they couldn't even get first or second. Like, something has gone terribly wrong. Glenn, if you have yeah. four out of the top I think, six, yeah, Boca, maybe maybe that sprinter could uh, could coach Boca some more and and told him to go more to the right side of the road so he could only let him through and the rest of the of the of the sprinters had to go through the wind past Boca on the left side. So maybe there's a bit of coaching uh, coaching issue in the team. Yeah. But hey, then again, it's a training crit. So uh, you have to start some f somewhere to learn. Yeah, you we get these things wrong in training crits, so that way hopefully we can get them right in in a in a real consequential criterion, a, a sanctioned race. Let's think about the wind a little bit more. Let's think about the pacing a little bit more, and let's incorporate more of our teammates. You don't want f four teammates all sprinting with 150 meters to go. The timing has gone terribly wrong. You want let's say you had five riders. In this case, there were five of them. Boca finishes at 1200 meters the next guy finishes at 700 meters the next guy finishes at 400 meters and then the final lead out guy brings it to 150 meters that way instead of going 30 miles an hour into the final couple hundred meters you're going 38 miles an hour which makes it so you don't just get sniped by the pro in the field who was probably like hey appreciate the lead out Bo boca <laughs> you know thanks for the win yeah because because he seemed a lot more experienced and positioned himself a lot better so Anyway, um, I could drag on about the dynamics of a lead-out. It's kind of uh, one of my favorite things in bike racing. Maybe we'll save that for the next video. Um, but for now, Glenn, always a pleasure having you on. Yeah, it was great talking about this race uh, of my former teammates. So thanks, man, for having me. Of course. And um, comment down below if you guys want more Dutch racing. Um, we'll try to get some more from you fans out there. And, of course, we have a season to look forward to of Glenn racing. So um, stay tuned, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, Jeff.